Hello, welcome to another session. So today we're going to be doing um, integration and we're continuing on with the series um, that we started. Um, so up until now, we basically have done integration by parts using the awesome DI uh, method. So um, that was the first video. The second video was integration um, using trig, uh, in particular T results. So today we continue on that trig um, journey where we'll use um, some of the harder trig substitutions that you'll see um, to basically solve some questions. So if you um, haven't already done so, please subscribe, put a like on this video, share it with your friends. Um, so let's delve right into it. So integration And today we're doing trig substitution. So the whole point of this is basically for me to show you um, questions that basically can't really be done in um, any other fashion. Well, I, that's a lie. You can, I guess, but uh, uh, it would be fairly painful to do so. So um, trig substitutions, the moment you see structure uh, questions with this sort of structure, you'll know it's a trig substitution question. So. And by trig substitution, it basically leverages um, the trig identities that we've seen before. So I guess at this point, let's just quickly put down the trig identities that we're talking about. So obviously the, one, the most common trig identity, I think it's fair to say that you'll see in the 11 and 12 mathematics is sine squared plus, oh, I'm missing the part, I know, equals to one. This is super common. I don't need to talk about it much, but just to be, um, I guess, a little bit smart is that obviously then cos squared x equals to one minus sine squared and sine squared equals to one minus cos squared obviously All right now also so there are three that i want to explore today sine squared plus cos squared is one um, next one there is obviously sec squared equals to um, tan squared plus one I think the uh, the phrases that help people understand this wasn't it. Um, a man with a tan is sexy, and was it a baby in a cot? Um, is um, cozy. So I won't do that one now. But basically, get that into your system there. Um, also, if I rearrange this one here, tan squared equals to sex squared minus one. Now, these three here are super important, right, for today's session. So what I'm going to do is for each one of these, I'm going to basically um, relate them to a particular integral that we'll use it for. So for the first one, whenever you see um, square root, where it's a squared minus x squared dx. Now, for those that know, obviously, that's a um, semicircle function. So if I was to sketch a, it'd be a semicircle. Now, integrating part of the semicircle. So you can imagine if I had a semicircle, if I just wanted, you know, between two certain sections, that's hard. If I wanted the whole semicircle, you can just find half a circle, right? But just a set, certain segment of that semicircle um, using integration area under the curve, super hard, right? We need to access um, this trig identity to help me do it, where what I want you to see is that whenever you see anything, and it doesn't need to be, you know, just a square, it can be like, you know, um, one on this guy, or like um, have, have another X there or something, and you'll see some of the variations today. Use, oops, let me use a black pen for that. Use the substitution, let X equal to A sine theta. Now, this is super, super important. Because now, why? Because if you think about it, when I sub a sine theta into the x value here, you can sort of see a, that becomes a squared sine squared. If I factorize it a squared out, I get one minus sine squared. Using this identity here, one minus sine squared is cos squared. I get action, right? The whole purpose of these substitutions is to be able to remove the square root. By putting in a, a sine theta here, and it becomes like a squared in brackets, one minus sine squared. The one minus sine squared becomes cos squared. Square root of cos squared simplifies, right? So for each one of these substitutions, you'll see the next one, right? This one here is just, you basically observe this part and this part, right? And in this one, this part here. 
So whenever you see a square root saying where it's x squared, plus, oh, maybe I'll rearrange the, just to get them aligned. I was going to do, I was going to do x squared plus a squared, but let's just do a squared plus x squared. You can see a squared plus x squared, it looks like this format, in which case I'm going to use the trig substitution where I'm going to, oops, sorry. I'm going to say let x equal to a sec theta. Yep, as my substitution for this. Because once again, if I sub in a, sorry, that's a lie, tan, right? A tan theta. Yeah. And the reason for that is because if I sub in a tan theta into the x, the a squares factorize, I get one plus tan squared theta. I know that's going to be sec squared, right? And then the square root and the sec squared can simplify. So once again, the whole purpose of substituting these guys in is to be able to remove the square root, right? And that is key. So full completeness, let's do the last one as well. So if I have a structure like this where it's x squared minus a squared dx, so very similar to the one above, but with the a and the x sort of switched around, then I'm going to use the substitution of let x oops, equal to a sec theta. All right. Now, these are hard because, as with all questions in integration in four unit, whether you hate it or love it for this reason, integration in four unit mass or extension two mass is such that they give you a question and you have to determine the technique right, or the formulas or the approach that you want to take for it. So whenever there's square roots, where's a squared plus or minus um, a, a squared plus or minus x squared or x squared minus a squared, this is how you do it. So let's explore. Um, some examples. Right. Maybe we'll just, you know, we'll do one or two just to draw this out and uh, we'll leave it as a very relatively short video. So that's the theory. Let's do some examples. So maybe one or two. I'll do maybe an example and then I'll uh, show you a past paper question. So if I said to you find, right, integral, let's do the classic one, right? Let's do classic one minus x squared dx. Yeah. So that's clearly a semicircle, right? Clearly a semicircle that I'm trying to integrate. So if I was to you know, put some limits on here, I can find area between two sort of strips within the uh, semicircle. Now, I can see, right? If it's one minus, if I let the x equal to, um, now a is one, so this is just uh, sine x. Now I'll let it be sine, you can let it be cos as well, it doesn't really matter, but sine when it differentiates is positive, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Oops, sorry, sine uh, theta, right? Because I wanna change the variable. So I'm gonna replace the x's with theta. So in this case, differentiating both sides, diff derivative of sine is cos positive d theta. Guys, I'm gonna substitute this into here. I'm going to substitute um, this into here. Yeah, and see where it takes me, right? So let's see. So this integral equals to integral of now. The sole purpose or the main purpose of using this substitution is to be able to go, well, now it's one minus sine squared. I can actually simplify this square root, right? Dx gets replaced with cos. Right, I know that square root of one minus sine squared, and maybe I'll do it in two steps. That's cos squared times cos. Yeah, scroll down a bit. Square root of cos squared and cos is cos. Yeah, that's the integral of cos squared. Now, guys. We know that from our three to mass, one of the sort of classical questions is this guy where using my double angle um, formula with the cos one, it's two cos squares minus one. So if I rearrange that, I know that cos squared equals two, what's that? Cos two X plus one on two, sub that in, right? So replace that in so you get to be cos 
2x plus 1 on 2. Oops, sorry, not no, replace it with x. Leave it as theta plus 1 on 2. Because I can't really integrate cos squared, but I can integrate cos 2, right? And that becomes half integral of cos. Um, cos integrates positive, right? So that's sine 2 theta on 2 plus theta plus c. Now, if you did this, perfect, you got it right, you will lose some marks. Why? Yeah, the reason why you'll lose some marks is because your answer right now is in terms of theta, but your original question was in terms of x. So this is why the trig substitution has that extra element of difficulty, right? Not only do you have to choose the correct substitution to remove the square root so you can integrate the trig, you then, once you get to the end, because you've used substitution, you got to replace, but unless there's limits, in which case you could have just re-expressed the limits. Um, in this case, there's no limits, so I need to replace or re-express theta in terms of x. So this is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to utilize my original x equal to sine theta here, right? Yeah, to basically give me the ability to go, well, sine theta is x, so I can draw up a right angle triangle to say, sine theta is x, which is x on one. By Pythagoras, this guy here is one minus x squared, right? So from this triangle, I can get all the expressions that I need to do to, do, uh, to substitute. In. And what I mean by that, if I sort of zoom into the bottom here, sine two theta, now I know using my double angle um, expression for sine, that's sine cos on four, so that nicely cancels out, plus theta on two plus theta. So I need to substitute three things. I need sine, cos, and theta, right? They're the three, so sine, cos, and theta. Remember those, I'm gonna pop up there to the right angle triangle and get them all, right? So from this, I already got sine, right? That's one down, sine equals x. From this triangle, cos theta equals to adjacent on hypotenuse, so root one minus x squared. And also I need theta as well. So if, if sine theta is x, then also, you can say that theta is the inverse of x, right? So one, two, three, let's pop those into my final answer. So my final answer is going to be in terms of x. So it'll be sine cos, so it'll be x. This guy was that square root x squared all on two plus theta, which was the sine inverse on two plus c. Guys, that is the final question. So I'd say that's a relatively easy question using the trig substitution, right? There can be much harder ones, especially when you start using the sec one because that delves into last week's lesson where it utilizes my favorite question, which is a sec integral of sec theta. I won't do that today or um, maybe I will. Let's do it. Uh, let's be heroic. Yeah, let's be heroic. Let's do another question where um, I get to demonstrate um, my favorite question. You know, I can't do it enough times. Right? I can't do sec theta enough times. So, part B. I'll do. I'll do three questions. Right? And just here, let's do three questions. So let's do this one. Just to sort of demonstrate um, which substitutions you use when, right? Now, I've got the. I don't care whether that is in a fraction. It doesn't matter at all. I need to target my substitution for x such that the square root cancels out. So I'm going to say let x equal to, now see that 25, I need 5, right? Because then when I square it, 25 factor five. I need the identity to be something squared minus 1. Now I know that sec squared minus 1 gives me tan squared, right? Perfect. So that's what I'm going to do. Using this substitution, Right, differentiate both sides. Now I know this side's dx, the five's there. Derivative of sec, derivative sec, sec 10. So please make sure that's not in the ref reference paper. Make sure though you do I know that d theta. So once again, sub this guy into here. And sub this guy into here. So I'm a big fan of my uh, colored arrows just to show you what I'm doing. Yep, and we'll go from there. We'll see, we'll see where that takes us. So let's see, let's see. So square root. Now, x squared would definitely be 25. Can I 
factorize that at the same time. So, so two steps in one multiplied by five sec 10. But if you know where you're going with this, the fives will cancel out, the tens will cancel out and you get sec, right? My favorite integral, my favorite um, little hack. So let's see. I know the bottom there, I can see it now. So the top, it will be five sec 10, right? On the bottom there, five, 10, because that's hand squared. So let's get rid of that. And then I can see the five and the 10 going away. Integral of sec. Now, if you've forgotten my little hack approach last week, so method two, right? A quick, a quick approach to this. There is a very quick way of doing this. So what I'm gonna do, and the quick way is to basically leave a bit of space for you to pop in, multiply that by sec theta plus tan theta. If you don't remember this, look at last week's last video, right? The last video where I did um, uh, t trig with t results. So multiply top and bottom by sec plus tan. And the reason why that's crucial is because the moment you do that, if you sort of let the bottom be fx, right? The derivative of sec is um, derivative of sec is sec tan. Derivative of tan. Um, sorry, did I have that right? Let me say that again. Um, the derivative of sec is sec tan, and the derivative of tan is sec squared. That's right. Yeah, because the integral of sec squared. So, in other words, the derivative is actually the expression on top, right? And we know as part of our reference paper, and we know part of two unit that if the derivative of a fraction of a function is on top in a fraction, that gives me ln of the function itself. A great result. Yeah. Now, normally, that'll be like all the marks. However, we know that with trig substitution here, um, it's in terms of theta. I need to get my um, answer in terms of x. So I'm going to pop back up here where my blue substitution here, I'm going to derive, so I'm going to um, get the information I need on this right angle triangle. Now I know if I re-express sec to sec theta, there is um, x on five. Yep, sort of reciprocal that to get cos is equal to five on x. Cos is adjacent hypotenuse Pythagoras, right? Because then I need an expression I can see there. I need sec and tan, right? Those are the two things I need there. So I've got sec. So then from this triangle, then tan theta is opposite on adjacent. And that's my answer, right? If I pop that in, I'll just make a needle. I'm just going to zoom in for a bit. Yeah. So it's ln. Yeah, this one here is um, x on 5 plus this guy here was root x squared minus 25 on five. Yep, plus c. Now you can leave it like that. I think, let me just zoom out just to see. Perfect, perfect, done. You know what, just to really make, if I was a student, really make my teachers, I'm gonna just put everything over five. So final answer, ln x plus root x squared minus 25 on five plus c. my answer. How's that? Not too bad, huh? Not too bad. Now, so while you're copying that down, I'm just going to say that this question, this structure where it's x squared minus 25, right? If that was 25 minus x squared, that's sine inverse, right? But we don't have a formula for x squared minus 25. Now, we used to have a formula that before 2000 and uh, when was it? Before 2000, I know 2012 had, uh, I think it was before 2018. Um, we had what we called standard integrals, and this was part of the old set of reference paper integrals, right? When the new reference paper came out, maybe it was 2020, um, they got rid of it. Yeah, they got rid of it, um, which is a shame, but basically the way you would do this question. So before, I guess what I'm trying to say is they gave you a formula for this, they got you the answer immediately. Now they don't. Uh, you, got, you you have to use t t um, tricks up. 
still get there. Just a bit long-winded. Hey, guys. Let's do one more question, all right? One more question. I believe I have a HC pass paper. Yes. Good. This one sort of has... Um, limits as well. So we've not done that yet. So it's a good question. So maybe I'll go example. So this one here is from the HSC uh, 2009. Yeah. And it says evaluate. An integral that's between the limits of zero, uh, 1 and root 3. 1 on x squared root. Oops, big root there. 1 plus x squared dx right so remember what i said before it doesn't matter what else is around town right if there's one on x squared here that's fine i need to get rid of this square root right so i'm going to target my substitution to do exactly that so i'm going to say that x equal to now this one's a is one so this one's one yeah. but this one here is x squared so i'm going to think about other the three possibilities right sine sec and 10 which one will go in here that would simplify the square root 10 right because 1 plus 10 squared is sec squared square root sec squared perfect so i'm going to let it be 10x oh sorry 10 theta rather yeah. now i'm going to do an extra thing here where because there's limits right i'm going to replace those limits as well so i'm going to well let me differentiate first so dx equals derivative of 10 is sec squared Yeah, so previously, I basically just substitute that into there and substituted um, that into there. And that was it. But so, so let me do this. Put that one there. Into here. Actually, for this one, I'm going to put it also into here. Yeah, but because of the limits, right, I need to do a third substitution where at this point here, right, when x equals to root three. And when that's root three, shift 10 or inverse 10 that, um, you get theta equals to pi on three, 60 degrees. And when x equals to one, and when that's one, looks like it's 45, so pi on four, I would need to substitute these two into here. So, a triple sub, all right? Triple sub to get this expression looking like new limits of pi on four, pi on three, one on now x squared, so 10 squared, theta root one plus 10 squared theta times sec squared theta d theta, all right? Feels like a lot of stuff. Now I know. I know the whole purpose of this is that this guy here is sec squared, square root. So this whole thing equals a sec theta, right? That equals a sec theta. Guys, let's do a bit of working out. Let's not be, um, let's not skimp on the working out. So pi on four, pi on three, one on 10 squared theta. Now that's sec. You know what? On top, I'm going to put the sec squared there, d theta. All right, let's see, the squared cancels out. Now I've got sec on 10 squared. So those that are on top of their tr uh, integration game, right, in four unit mass, you start looping through. Can I use substitution? Because it's sec and 10. If I let u equal to 10, the derivative is sec squared. That doesn't work because I only have sec on top. So it's not a substitution question. What else can I do? Do I let u equal to sec? In which case, the uh, derivative is sec 10. That doesn't cancel out as well. The third thing you can try, right? So le le let me actually write it out just so you can visualize it, right? The third thing you can try. So let me, let me just loop through that thinking process again slower, slowly. So whenever you do this, a part of you should think, if I let u equal to 10, that becomes u squared. The derivative is the derivative upstairs because if it is, done, easy. If u equals to 10, the derivative of 10 is sec squared. That's sec, doesn't work. If I let, if, conversely, if I let u equal to sec on top, 
the derivative of sec is sec 10 that doesn't cancel things out on the bottom. So I need something else, right? And that's something else in this case, right? To experiment with is to basically look at this and go, well, sec and tan, what if I re-express that into sine and cos? So sec would be one on cos, tan squared will be sine squared and cos squared. Let's see where that takes us, right? So this is why trig integration is hard because there's lots of identities, lots of little tricks, right? Lots of different techniques. So in this case, it's just trig identities, right? Let's see if that works. Now, hopefully you guys, so let me not squash it down the bottom there. I'll just draw a line and I'll come over here, integral pi on four, on three. Okay, let me zoom in. Are you guys okay with, firstly, that this, uh, this cos cancels out with that, that cos and then the reciprocal of this guy, the cos comes upstairs, so you get cos on sine squared, right? Hopefully that's okay. Cos on sine squared. Now we're getting places, guys. Because look at this. Now we go through the same substitution process again. If I let u equal to sine, the derivative is cos. Perfect. That works, right? So for example, if I let u equal to sine um, theta, right? That works, that absolutely does. Because du equals to cos d theta and d theta there equals to du on cos and that cancels out the top. So once again, I'm gonna do, because of the limits, just to simplify this, let's do a triple sub. This guy into here. This guy into here, so highlight that, into sine squared, right? And thirdly, the limits, right? For the second time in this question, we're gonna re-express these limits. So when theta equals to pi on three, u, was that sine 60 is root three on two. And when theta is pi on four, that's 45 u equals to one on root two. Yeah, maybe, I, maybe I should do root two and two. We, we, yeah, we could, let's see what, see what, see what, yeah, let's clean up it. So my integral once again changes the limits for the second time, right? To root three on two and one on root two. Cos is still there for now. That becomes u squared. This guy becomes du on cos theta, beautiful gone, gone, integral of one on u squared. If you were awesome, it'd be negative one on negative one on u. Yep, that works, All right? With the limits of root three on two, one on root two. Now, I ask my students this all the time, whether the teachers tell them at school, and a lot of the times they don't, which surprised me. See this negative, negative limit? Right, it flips the limits, right? So negative in front, it flips the limits, right? So because if you sub it in, it'll be first limit minus second limit, but with the negative, it just swaps the order. So before I sub it in, I, I always ask my students, when there's a negative, just flip the limit, right? It just makes life a little bit more pleasant without the negative in front. And then your limits being subbed in will be one on root two minus root three on two. I should have done root two and two because if I rationalize that as return to my final answer, let's see if it's right. Did I do something wrong there? No, root three and two. So I'm just checking the answers. Ah, sure. root three and two. Yeah, it looks fine. Looks fine. Does it? Does it look fine? Root three and two. Sorry. <laughs> um, root two and two, I think. I think that's fine. Root two and two. Root two and two. Oh, that's no, I subbed it in wrong. It's the reciprocal, duh, Ricky. That's root two minus the reciprocal. Man, I did the hard stuff right and the easiest part wrong where I just think I need to sub it in. So that's the reciprocal. Yeah. So final answer, um, root six minus two, or root three. Actually, if you rationalize that a little bit more, it'd be root uh, root 18, which is three root two minus two 
root 3 on 3. Guys, how is that? Yeah, how is that? So, it all sort of started with this trig substitution piece, right? Where if it's 1 plus x squared, use 10. In the previous question, if it's x squared minus something, use sec. If it's 1 minus x squared, use sine. All cos. Yeah, sine's better. How's that? Guys, that's trig sub. I was going to leave it at three videos uh, for this playlist, uh, for this series. Um, I will do one more where next week I'll just show you some special cases and some maybe cooler questions. Um, uh, and then, um, yeah, we'll call it there, call, call it wraps for integration for this series. If you like this video, please give me a like, uh, subscribe, tell your friends. I'll see you guys later. Thank you.